Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Everyday Farmers Conference, all about getting started with small ruminants, which are goats and sheep. Today, we have Marie Helene Bellinger. Um, she's going to talk to us all about sheep's milk and products you can make from sheep, products that are themed with sheep. <laughs> um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk all things dairy, which is definitely something I'm interested in because we do sheep dairy, or we're going to hopefully. Um, so Marie, Marie Helene, can you just introduce yourself and then we'll get into the questions. Yes. Um, yes, my name is Marie Helene Bilendra. I'm a French Canadian living in rural Vermont with my husband and my nine year old son. And we have chickens and ducks and sheep and a Merima sheep dog on our homestead. And uh, like Delaney said, I am a soap maker and I make lots of body care, candle and home decor goods. Great, great. So can you talk a little bit about kind of because we talked earlier before I started recording that um, you weren't raised or you didn't have sheep growing up. So can you talk a little bit about how you got into sheep or even just into farming? Yes, yes. Um, so I grew up in Montreal um, and my husband grew up in New York City. So we are definitely city kids and we moved to um, actually from a city of 8 million people to a rural town of 800 <laughs> uh, back in 2006. Um, and in 2011, we started our homestead. Um, actually, I was trying to get pregnant for two years and a half and uh, without any success. And I was feeling pretty low. And we just decided to um, start a homestead, just growing our own food uh, and getting some animals. So we started with a flock of chickens, uh, followed by three sheep. I actually have a photo of our original three sheep right here. Uh, right there. There they are. So we still have one of them, Pearl, the white faced one um, that we still have on our homestead. And, um, and we got a beautiful Marima sheepdog. I have to show his picture. He is gorgeous. <laughs> we still have him as well. So here he is. Uh, oh. He's an excellent live, livestock um, work dog. Uh, the breed is from Italy. It's called Mar Marima da Bruzzi, and he's just a wonderful dog. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so we started all of that, and a month later, I got pregnant. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we had all those animals not knowing anything about anything, basically, and I was pregnant, so it was very overwhelming. Um, so, and we had all kinds of ideas about starting a business back in 2011, uh, but I just got overwhelmed with all of it. <laughs> so we just decided to raise our son and of course take care of all the livestock and just put the business on the back burner for a few years and just enjoy our boy and all our animals. <laughs> That's basically how it all started. <laughs> I love white white livestock garden dogs. Oh. We have a great Pyrenees and so oh. white white fluffy is just like I just love. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's so white, but when we, you know, we have lots of snow right now. So compared to the snow, he's yellow. <laughs> he looks more yellow, but he's gorgeous. And uh, he's 10 years old right now, and he's still doing very well. Yeah, or they're brown because they're dirty. <laughs> because they're exactly, one or the other. <laughs> um, so, so you said you went from a very big city to kind of a very small city um, in comparison. What kind of drove you, I guess, from the city to the farm because I mean or to a small town because that's a very extreme change. It is an extreme change and we were looking for an extreme change so much so that uh, we decided to buy a house uh, five hours away from the city uh, without securing any jobs. So we commuted, <laughs> it was crazy, we commuted every single week for a year and a half um, you know, doing 10 hour, 11 hours of driving just to be able to have this lifestyle a few days a week. So it was insane. I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> but yeah, so we were looking for a change of lifestyle. We were sick of the rat race. And uh, growing up, I had a country house and I always loved flowers and just gardening and yeah, and just co community feel. We were missing that also in New York City. There's a lot of people, but not as much community than in small uh, towns, small rural towns. So yeah, we were just ready to start a family and just change our lives completely. Um, so yeah, I 
yeah, I don't know. It was a crazy idea. And we, I never regretted it one day. We moved uh, 14 years ago and there's not one day I would, yeah, that I regret our choice. <laughs> it was the right decision. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. Just kind of taking that, that leap of faith. Yeah. Um, my husband and I did that when we moved from California to Tennessee. And uh, people were always like, that's What crazy. are you doing? Yeah. And, yeah. And it was just like, it just felt right, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, when, when it feels right, it's not so scary. And it's yeah. not over, it's not like, it's not overwhelming, but it's still not like, I don't know. It just feels different when it just feels right. Yes, for um, sure. So you showed your sheep. Um, what breed of sheep do you guys raise? Uh, we have uh, East Frisian sheep, which are excellent and well-known for their sheep milk production. So that, and the ram we're getting tomorrow also East Frisian. So we're staying with this breed uh, uh, right now. Yeah, it, it's interesting. We have East Frisians too, but they're crossed with um, Gulf Coast um, oh, sheep because yeah. um, of our, our uh, heat climate? temperature. Our oh. climate needed a little bit of um, heat resiliency. Oh. So we like, so that's, so we got something from Alabama. <clears throat> Excuse I, me. Um, and I was like, that's really interesting that you guys have, uh, is it mostly East Frisian or pure East Frisian? Yeah, I think there's probably a little crust there. I'm not sure. My husband is the one that is in charge of that. Mm. Um, yeah, so I help <laughs> a little bit, you know, like doing some chores, but he's more the one that, um, you know, research the breed and deals with the breeder and the one that's going to pick up the sheep tomorrow. <laughs> so I would have to ask him, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty, pretty pure. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're because they're milk or dairy sheep. I know dairy sheep can have a tendency to be a little more sensitive. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like you you guys probably have a very similar weather to where they they originate. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. They, they originated in Germany, I believe, um, yeah. which I think is pretty similar to your weather. Whereas yeah, you know, yeah we don't need that much heat. Um, you know, yeah. we don't need to be heat resilient here for sure. Yeah, in Tennessee, the humidity is really what gets us, and so yeah. we need sheep to kind of that we're more okay with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what got you into selling your items? Like you kind of said that you, you kind of wanted to, and then kind of life got a little bit crazy and then you um, kind of waited a little bit and then started again, but what kind of got you interested in even the idea of selling it? Yes. Selling what you make? Yeah. So actually for years um, I just made, I, I was really passionate about, making all natural cleaning products and body care products, not with sheet milk, just, you know, uh, just regular <laughs> soaks and scrubs and things like that. So I always like that. I also love gardening. So everything botanicals for me, like drying my own herbs. And I, I just love gardening. That's one of my passion, especially perennial um, gardening. And um, so, yeah, so I just did that for years and years and years. And we always had in, in our minds, um, in the back of our minds, to uh, make some sheet milk ice cream. That was our initial dream. Um, and But to make sheet milk ice cream, we need a bigger flock <laughs> than what we had. And also, you know, we were both working full time. So just milking and breeding, it just got overwhelming. So in 2018, uh, I'm actually a classical pianist and a piano teacher. Um, so that's what I've been doing my whole life. And in 2018, I was just ready for a change. I also uh, had a nervous breakdown. Actually, this is what happened that I couldn't work for a while. Um, and this dream of ours just came back and it kind of mixed with my love of gardening and um, just my love of all natural body care products, like everything kind of came together and I had a lot more time on my hands. <laughs> um, and I just decided to try a few things and just get some sheet milk and just try to make my first batch of soap. Um, and I just fell in love with soap making. That was, my, you know, one of the things that got me into selling it is just how much I love, love, love doing it. Uh, doing, you know, making soap. Uh, and um, and after that, when I tried our first sheet milk soap, it was just amazing. I mean, it was so creamy and, uh, you know, and I used lavender essential oil. That was my first batch. And I was just in heaven. I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> so it really started out of uh, lots of anxiety and just a need for change um, that I was craving. And, um, and yeah, that's, I guess we started our, we got our flock. <laughs> We started homesteading because I couldn't get pregnant and I started the business with, uh, you know, little, uh, the nervous breakdown I had. Um, and but it kind of transformed into 
a whole business that we're passionate about. So yeah, well, I, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I find that like when you have a hobby like soap making, like yes. you kind of have to sell it because you don't use that much soap. That much. But usually exactly. you have to make you know large batches. So you know if it's a hobby that you want to continually do, it it's like okay then yeah, I'll you need. a garage of soap if I don't yeah. share it. <laughs> yeah, my family and friends were very happy to get you know all the uh, all this. So but at some point actually they were encouraging me to uh, maybe try to sell it and especially if you love making it you know it's just why not you know mm -hmm. so I had a lot of support from uh, my sister actually she was um, yeah she encouraged me a lot during that time to pursue this passion so I'm very grateful yeah one of the things that I really admire about your Instagram page is just the the your pictures are lovely oh <laughs> they're you. so pretty I, I just look at them and I'm just like oh my gosh you can hang that on a wall oh. <laughs> You know, I'm like, I don't know. I'm, 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 my pictures are always very kind of raw because I yeah. don't do the like night, the professional pictures yet. And so I look at yours and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Oh, I am oh no professional. I actually got a camera, um, uh, used camera on Craigslist and, you know, and watch 5 billion, you know, YouTube videos on how to photograph something. Mm -hmm. And I actually do not have an iPhone. So maybe that's why I need to, I, I take my, for Instagram, for example, I take my pictures with my regular camera and uh, I have to upload them on Instagram. It's a whole, it takes me forever. And <laughs> so, but I'm no professional. I'm just self-taught and, uh, and I love it. Actually, that's one thing that I really enjoy uh, doing. Yeah photography so <laughs> yeah one of the things that I I am learning about is like branding and stuff like that mm -hmm. really you want all your you want whatever you're putting out there to be kind of to all kind of look the same you don't want yeah. something to be like completely different than what you posted like the other day for sure and, um for, that was one of the things I noticed about yours is it all kind of has a very similar feel like um it has a, a texture and a feel like a con like I don't know you use a lot of like bright colors and stuff yeah like that. yeah and then and I just kind of look at all the pictures I'm like they all look like they go together and that's yeah, like one yeah, of yeah. things about branding that I I really I like is that when when someone really knows their brand and knows what they like and what they want everything to look like and have it all look very cohesive and yeah. so I look at your your Instagram and I'm always just like oh it all looks so like pretty <laughs> thank you um, and actually in 2016 before I started that whole sheep shop um uh, endeavor. Um, I was actually, uh, I was, I had a blog, I was writing a blog for two years yeah. and my pictures were horrible for two years. So that took, you know, like the sheep shop came after all those trials and errors. And uh, I realized, yes, that everything had to have a cohesive look. And so I kind of worked on, on that, you know, and, but I think natural light is the way to go. And um, yeah, and just, I like bright, bright, bright. So I use the same window and the same, same setup. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, yeah it's a, social media, that's actually something that, uh, yeah, that takes a lot of work. And um, yeah, you gotta, you're going to enjoy it for sure to put all that work into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's yeah. days that I'm not that into it, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's just, anyway, it's just great. I just love, love the whole look. Um, so how many sheep, you talked about the three that you started with, how many do you have now? Yeah, so we had, you know, like it went up and down over the years. And now we have two sheep, uh, two uh, you, and we're getting a ram and we're hoping to, that's my, my husband's dream, to grow our flock this year. Um, and um, so we're going to breed late spring if that works out. So this is... Um, very late, you know, especially for Vermont, but we talked to some breeders in the area and they said it was okay. We were just going to, you know, lamb a little bit later than most people. So mm -hmm. we'll see if that's going to work out or not, but uh, we're going for it. <laughs> 2021 yeah. is the year. Because <laughs> you plan to milk them, correct? So you'll be milking kind of through winter? Uh, yes. Through fall, through fall. Yeah, through fall, exactly. And um, so, yeah, so that's our hope. Um, to be able to do that because the business kind of grew uh, a little bit and even with the pandemic it kind of grew uh, in 2020 and we realized that now it is time to have our own sheep's milk I mean it's nice to um, you know to support other farms but the our local farm uh, is actually not um, planning to uh, milk this year mm -hmm. so um, so that was also an incentive for us to uh, yeah to get our own <laughs> our own sheep's milk 
and yeah, we have all kinds of dreams we're like butter and cheese and yogurt that's you know especially my husband wants to do cheese so we're going to need a lot more sheep's milk this year so yeah. well yeah and it, it's it's just nice to not have to rely on on someone else's supply even if it's even if you know they're doing really well depending yeah. on the year sometimes you know everything fluctuates yeah so, for sure know, whether it's yeah, like we want to be self-sufficient uh, yeah yeah because yeah. even now i'm running out uh, I've, you know, for a soap, I've been freezing a bunch of gallons and I, I'm running out. So, um, so yeah, so, it, and nobody has any sheep's milk available right now, anywhere close to Vermont. So uh, we really need to, um, yeah, to do that this year to, to be self-sufficient. Is that, um, is the, the lack of supply because there's just not a lot of sheep dairies in the area? Cause I mean, that's, that's our, that's what I'm finding at least for Tennessee yes. is that there's, there's no sheep farmers. And there's definitely like very, very few, if not like none, um, dairy farmers, like sheep dairy farmers. Um, oh, is that yeah. similar to where you guys are? Same in Vermont. And, you know, now it's cows. I mean, you know, you can milk all year round. Um, there's, I think uh, in Vermont, there's a lot more uh, gold farmers uh, than sheep farmers. And um, so, yeah, so we have one big um, sheep farm, Vermont Shepherd in Vermont. And this is actually where we got our last um, last batch of sheep's milk. And he makes amazing, you know, cheese, but he needs most of his milk to make his award-winning cheeses. So, um, so yeah, so we're just trying to get our act together and not rely on anyone, uh, you know, starting in 2021. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I remember when I was going on my search to find sheep's milk before we even thought yeah. we were going to get sheep because I was like, well, if we can buy, you know, the milk from somebody versus having the sheep, that's going to be a lot easier. Um, and it was just like anyone I talked to was like, you know what, we actually use all of our milk. Yep. Yeah. Because, because they, the one we were looking at, the one we got our sheep from, they do uh, cheese and caramel. And they're like, you know, we use every drop, yeah. you know, yeah. we don't really have extra. And I was like, okay, that sounds like that's going to be a, an answer. I'm going to hear a lot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, that, that's what I did. Even oh. this, when our ram died, I just made a bunch of calls and they were only that farm, uh, Vermont Shepherd, that big, big, big uh, dairy farm that would, that had some left over. And another challenge that I'm facing quite a bit is I need sheet milk powder. And this is um, something I've been looking into since 2011, <laughs> since we started, because I knew for a lot of our products, because we do not want to use any preservatives, that I could not use fresh sheep milk in all of our body care, because uh, when you use fresh sheep milk, it will mold. So you, and un unless it's saponified, unless you're making soap, but if you're putting it in other products, you need sheep milk powder. And there are no producer of sheep milk powder in the United States. So this is a huge, huge roadblock that we're still dealing with, you know, nine years later. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope there's a lot of goat milk powder, not a lot. I mean, there's a company, I, Mayenberg, I forgot the name, that uh, does goat milk powder, uh, but no sheep milk powder in the United States. Uh, there are some in New Zealand and Italy, uh, in Asia, you know, and it's hard to import it here. And um, and I've been trying to make my own <laughs> sheep milk powder by the, actually I have a little jar right here. So this is a cup of sheep milk that is now in sheep milk powder form and it takes forever and it's, you know, hard to do, expensive to do. And uh, so, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, one challenge that we have that we're, we've been facing to be able to keep going with this business is acquiring sheep milk powder. So. Yeah, so I actually want to hang on onto that because yeah. one of the things that I want to do is uh, just for a personal thing, not a business, um, is to actually make milk chocolate. And uh -huh. the only way to make milk chocolate is to have a milk in powdered form. Yeah. And there's, I mean, from every single milk person I talk to, I, a lot of people are like, I don't, you, you technically can, but I don't know how you do it. So how do you guys do it? I mean, you said it's expensive and it's, I'm sure it's time consuming and stuff like that. But for someone who is interested in that, kind of what do you guys do to get that, um, the milk in powdered form? Yeah, yeah. So um, we actually dehydrate it. So I put it in just a regular, I actually, no, that's not true. I, I got to, um, how do you say, I removed the fat. So I let it sit and, and, you know, for 24 hours in the refrigerator, take out all the fat. So this is the only way for me that I can get that uh, powder um, to actually 
you know, like disintegrate and not be oily. And um, so th I did that for years and it never worked without removing the fat on top. Mm -hmm. And um, so I gave up on this and we were just using other kind of milk powder, like goat milk powder and, and um, even, uh, you know, regular cow milk powder. And I read uh, somewhere um, with some um, homesteaders, the how you call that, the survive, survivor, survival <laughs> homesteaders that they, they told me that what you need to do is to have, uh, to remove as much fat as possible so it dries a lot better. Mm -hmm. So I just put it in a dehydrator, dehydrate, you know, for um, many hours, usually six hours. Um, so if you put one cup on each tray, <laughs> dehydrates it and it gives you a little bit that you can use in your uh, either, you know, the milk chocolate, or we use it in a lot of our body care uh, products. And I still use other milk powder as well. And what I use uh, is saponified sheet milk in our scrubs and soaks and a lot of our other products. Um, so I just shred it, uh, shred our soaps and put it in all of those uh, products. So we have uh, that as well on top of the milk powder, and it makes everything very creamy and very, you know, in the bat, very luscious and yeah, and rich and uh, yeah, and it works, it works well. Do you pasteurize before you dehydrate? Because it's not um, a food item, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I for, for, for things that go on your skin, I don't. Um, my sister, um, she's looking into this because she's the one doing a lot of our food items. So now we have um, caramel sauces and chocolate sauces. So she uses uh, fresh milk. Uh, for this. And um, I think she, I'm not sure. No, I think she uses raw, actually. I don't think she pasteurized it. Um, but, you know, you need to eat it fairly quickly. It needs to be refrigerated. Um, so, and she uses half cream, uh, cow's cream and half sheet milk. So I think that's a ratio, I, I think. <laughs> so, and it's just delicious. It's amazing. It's really good. And uh, we have a little farm store and those sauces are be our best sellers. <laughs> so yeah, and she does, I don't think she pasteurizes the, the sheet milk. Okay. Um, so when you dehydrate, I think they, they come out in kind of sheets, right? They don't come out powdered. So you, no. you break them up and then you put them in like a blender? A coffee grinder. Okay. Yeah. So, and it just comes out pretty good. And usually I have to do it a few times um, until it's just, you know, in the, in, into powder form. Sometimes it clumps a little bit at the beginning and I just, you know, put it again on a sheet. Sometimes I even dehydrate it a second time for, you know, 45 minutes or so and put it back in the coffee grinder. So it's definitely not, you know, um, cost effective or just time, you know, efficient at all. Uh, but we also are importing sheet milk powder. Actually, in two th back in 2011, we ordered tons and tons of sheet milk powder uh, from, I think it was from Italy, and it got stuck at the border, uh, and we never received the shipment. Uh, but now I found another source of sheet milk powder um, from a company that imports it to the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. It worked once. Now I tried a second time, and... Um, I'm awaiting the items. <laughs> I don't know where it is right now. So I'm hoping it can come to us. So I don't have to do all that work because um, it's definitely a whole process. In powdered form, does it does it go bad or is, does it last longer? No, it lasts. It's yeah, milk powder. Same thing then, you know, the tins you get of goat milk powder. It lasts a few years. Actually, I think it's even more than a few years. It's If you don't open it, it just lasts quite a bit. Um, so I don't know about our own sheet milk powder that we um, do ourselves because I just put it, you know, right. I mean, we sell it quickly and people use it. So I don't know how, what the shelf life would be, if, how many years it would be. But when it's in powder form, usually items last fairly long. Yeah. yeah. And, and one of the, the bonuses I, I, I think I've read about sheep's milk versus goat's milk is that you can freeze it as well. So yeah. like there's ways to, to make it last longer. I think they said Goat, I think you technically can freeze it, but if you're planning to do it for cheese, it doesn't like reconstitute it enough to yeah, yeah, yeah. make cheese taste as good. Um, whereas I think they said sheep's milk, you can freeze and um, thaw it and it, it still will kind of do what you want it to do, at least in cheese. Yes, yes. I've been doing that for two years without any problems. We actually have uh, my freezer right here behind me and we've been freezing gallons and gallons and gallons. And uh, usually I use it within six months. 
um, to make her soaps. Um, and even my sister, after four months, she made some th those sauces I was talking about. Uh, and it, you know, it smells very good. There's that, it does, it doesn't go bad at all. So I don't know past the six months, how long, you know, it's, uh, it would, uh, last in the freezer. That's usually when I, you know, when I buy, you know, when the season is, um, when I'm ready to buy more and when it's available. So I would have to test it to see if it passed, the, <laughs> if, if it lasts uh, more than six months. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully you don't need to, because then, yeah, exactly. you, then you go going through it. I mean, yeah. really the, the ideal is to use up the milk as soon as you can. Exactly. Because, <laughs> you know, the longer you wait, the just the the more of a chance that it's going to go bad. Exactly. So. And we just put, we, we put it in um, ice cube trays and this is what I use to make mm -hmm. our soap. So it's much easier to measure and you don't have to unfreeze, you know, a whole gallon. So you just take a few cubes. Um, actually I have two full cubes, um, two full trays of ice cubes that I use for a batch of soap. So we don't use any, any other liquid, only sheep's milk. Um, so, but it works very well to just, you know, do that um, when you make soap, um, sheet milk soap, just to use the trays. Is the ice in the lye solution or is it um, once you combine it all together? Uh, can you repeat that? If, uh, is the ice cubes in the lye solution or is it once you've combined it all? Yeah, so uh, first we put the, um, so I unfreeze the milk. I, you know, uh, I, mean, I mean, I put the cubes in the pot and after that you pour the lye very, very slowly. It takes a long, long time. And you just, um, you know, mix the whole thing. You add a little bit more lye until it's just a lye, your lye, lye slash sheet milk solution. And after that you combine that with your melted oils and butters. Mm. And after that it goes um, and emulsify it. And, and so on and after the essential oils and botanicals and it's a whole process but uh yes we need um we need to freeze the milk because the milk would scorch otherwise uh when you pour the lye on top so you need to uh use frozen milk um and with little cubes it works very very well yeah i think i've i've researched or looked into the fact that like you have to kind of use ice cubes yeah. anyway so like or at least in ice form anyway yeah. and so it's just nice to know that like the sheep's milk can do that and still act the same way oh for um, sure especially yeah. if you're milking your own and you know you're like oh i'm running out of like we can't drink enough of this what do we do with it it's like, yeah, oh, yeah you just freeze it <laughs> um <laughs> some people even in uh, warmer climates they even put their whole um pot of ice cubes in a nice cube tray uh to keep it even colder uh usually i just i don't need that i just do it with ice cubes and it works very good it doesn't scorch i actually never scorch any of her sheep's milk <laughs> since the beginning i never uh did that so it works very well yeah. Um, yeah, when it comes to uh, the small ruminants, either goats or sheep, it's so, the, their milk is so precious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't, don't want to waste it. You don't yeah. waste it because it, you know, it takes a lot of work to get as much out of it as, like, say, a cow. Um, sure. So, uh, so you talked about soap. I know you've done like bath bombs. Um, can you talk about some of the other products you've made with, um, with your sheep, or even just the products you have that are sheep themed? Because I know you yes. guys have like some cutting boards and stuff like that. Yes, I have actually the, um, I'm sorry, the list right here. Um, so we do, I'm sorry. Okay, so we do, yes, so our sheet milk soaps, we have sheet milk sugar scrubs and uh, bad bombs. We also have sheet milk bat soaks and uh, bat teas. We have sheet milk beeswax candles, um, and we have uh, little cute little you and lamb beeswax wax melts. And my husband makes uh, sheep cutting boards and coasters. And we also have some uh, sheep throw pillows. So that's what we have at the moment. And uh, we did serve sheep milk ice cream when we opened our little farm store this summer. So I made a lot of that. And uh, as I mentioned, my sister also makes some sauces um, that we sell here. Um, so I have tons of ideas for this year, but that's what we have right, right now, what we've been selling so far. One of the things that I think always fascinates me when it comes to um, people who do sheep's milk, but they, they do it in like molds of sheep. Yeah. I'm always curious, did you buy that from somebody? Did you guys make it? Um, because they have, you have to pour it into the specific molds to make the sheep's 
form. Right? Yes, yes, yes. So right now, the only um, thing we're using, actually, no, I, I just got new mold. So uh, to make lotion bar. So that's our new pro one of our new products this year. So that I got through Amazon. Mm -hmm. And the other molds that we make our uh, little wax melts uh, from, that I got on Etsy a long, back in 2011 when we wanted to <laughs> start this business. So that person is not making uh, molds anymore. And mm -hmm. when I was researching new molds, I couldn't find that many that were um, my taste. So I like more like the vintage look and they were all like cutesy little kid, you know, mold, you know, that would be attractive for children. So that's not the look I was going for. So there's not much. Um, so maybe at some point I'll have custom molds, you know, made for us, but, you know, for lotion bars, I just went with um, a ram and a little baby that I found on Amazon that I that I liked so <laughs> but yes I there's not much and even when I wanted to have molds for candle making I couldn't find anything um that you know had a sheep you know on it so yeah that's yeah. yeah yeah I I am very particular about how I like my sheep to look yeah 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 um yeah. there's some stuff I've seen online with like the bug eyes and I'm like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, and, uh, <laughs> and so there, so there's very few um like molds or something yeah. or even things that I've seen people use where I'm like oh that's really cute there's a place in uh, New Zealand um where they have like a boy and a girl and they have like it's very specific and it looks very very cute oh. um, I think they call it Ramio and Juliet oh <laughs> like that's the name of their molds and it's like the cutest thing yeah um, yeah it is like there's, and I'm like, and I really like those that kind of simple, kind of old, like you said, old fashioned look. Yeah, and all of a sudden, yeah, you go yeah. online, you try to find molds to make that are really cute, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> so, um, I think it's much easier to find to have custom stamps, you know, made for you that you can stamp your soaps or whatever you want. That's a lot easier. But molds, not much. I even contacted uh, people in Asia to get a, you know, a, a mold that I enjoyed, and even they were not gonna make it. <laughs> So I don't know. On Etsy, I saw a few companies making silicone molds. Um, so maybe I'll contact them in the future. But uh, right now, I'm just using what I have, Homestead style. <laughs> yeah. What I, I think the other thing too, like um, for people who don't know the stamps or what you stamp into the molds, <laughs> um, when uh, when they're done curing, or is it um, in the middle of curing? Yeah. So actually, you wait uh, 24 hours to unmold your soap loaf. And after that, you cut it. And uh, when you're done cutting it, you stamp it right away. And after that, it cures for four weeks. Uh, but you got to stamp it, you know, as soon as you cut it or, you know, not too too long after, because if not, it starts hardening and it just mm -hmm. doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So with the stamp, you can, you know, stamp multiple times um, in one yeah. bar. Um, whereas I would assume the ones that are shaped like sheep, you only have probably a set a number that you can do it at. Yes, time. yes. Yeah, what I wanted at first was a big tray of, you know, sheep that I could just pour, uh, but I that I didn't find at all. Uh, actually, I found one on Brembleberry with little, like I said, more like a cute lambs, you know, more for children, but I couldn't find huge trays. Uh, so I just got single molds of sheep. Um, I got a, you know, a bunch to make lotion bars, uh, but making a batch of soap, you need a lot more molds than that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It's so time it's to go with the stamps in that in that case, you know. Yeah, well, and it's time consuming as well for for soap and and I get I don't I've never made soap. This is all from, from research I've done, but it's like you pour, but after you know you have to do it all at the same time. It's yes, not yes. Like you can save the batch and like do it later. It's like no, I have to fill up the molds, and if I don't have enough molds, I either have a ton of leftovers or I have to do kind of the the rectangular bars anyway because I have excess and it's not going to fill them all. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We use essential oil, so it doesn't accelerate. I mean, some do, but most essential oils don't accelerate trays as fast. So I still have time, you know, to pour. I don't have hours whatsoever, but there's still a little bit more time than some people who use fragrances. Sometimes it just goes in a few minutes. It gets hard. Um, and actually at some one time, the batch I messed up the most, uh, I bought um, some essential oil, rose geranium essential oil online, and uh, it was not pure at all. It was very, oh, it was fragrance in my opinion. And so I just used that and it just got hard. In 30 seconds, my whole batch was hard. Um, so, and yeah, that was ruined completely. Um, so yeah, so you don't have that much time. You need to act pretty quickly. 
uh, when you make your soap. So you have time to pour in different molds, that's fine. But <laughs> yeah, you still have to act, you know, to, to have a good rhythm. Yeah, so one of the things I always, I always ask everybody is what, what is your favorite thing to make? And, and I, I'm also curious because it's a, a soap is so, so um, much of a aromatic. What is your favorite smell or, or thing that you, you, you like to use that you're just like, mm. oh, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm a floral kind of person. So lavender and rose. Um, yeah, that's, that's my jam for sure. And um, actually, I have a tiny little video uh, of uh, one soap I make, uh, which is my favorite, which is called uh, Rose Hope. I Aww. have it right here. So yeah, so this is a Rose Hope soap, and which I use rose geranium essential oil and a rose cairn clay. And we have, um, of course, sheet milk, rose buds, and uh, we have gemstone, rose quartz gemstones on top. So this is definitely my favorite soap to make. And um, it's part of the Precious Campaign, which is about giving luxury gemstone soaps uh, to battered women to remind them how worthy and uh, precious they are. Mm. So every time we sell a bar, we give one away to a woman's shelter. So here it's it's a very, a very uh, female looking soap. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, so like that's, I can't like pink, but. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry, I think the music, it's lovely music. It's actually Bach. Um, yeah, a piece I played myself. <laughs> All right, so that should, I'm sorry. Um, that should stop. Um, okay. There it is. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. It's very yeah. simple. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, so this is um, my favorite soap to make. Um, we, I also have um, lavender soap. I just made a batch of uh, nourishing oatmeal lavender soap with a Brazilian um, purple clay, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. So we only use um, botanicals and clays to color our soaps and only essential oils. So no synthetic um you know colors and fragrances and just not all natural um and i kind of enjoy the challenge of being able to find colors that are vibrant um but not synthetic um and that that are from nature um mm -hmm. i think our society is so used to very very strong smells um you know, lots of synthetic <laughs> <laughs> everything and to be able to offer a bar that I feel is as pure as we can offer it is um, always feels good to me and I'm an avid gardener so just growing stuff that we use in our soaps for me just makes it 10,000 times better we don't grow everything you know we use in our soaps but we grow quite a bit so that's also something I definitely enjoy I was actually going to ask because you'd mentioned the fact that you love to garden I would and I know that you can use items from the garden i think they have to be dried correct they can't be like absolutely fresh yes yes they are dried so there's you know calendula and spearmint we have so much mint like it's crazy i don't know what to do with it so we use yes um spearmint and there's lavender uh, lavender is a little bit harder to grow in our climate but i can still grow some hardier varieties and um this year i want to try hibiscus um so we have a rose hibiscus soap so i would like to uh, try that and uh yeah so i try roses that's another thing i've been uh, drying tons of roses um dehydrating tons of roses this year and i also have peonies uh the thing with essential oils is i, I love lilacs and peonies and there's no essential oils from those uh flowers so that's something that sometimes i feel that it's a little bit of a challenge to get all the smells i enjoy from nature but you know not being able to put it in soap, but trying to find other ways to bring the peony to the soap. Um, so I dried a lot of peony petals. So I'll put that on top of the soap and see what I can do for scent. Yeah, <laughs> that resemble a little bit the peony smell. So it's, it's amazing the difference between synthetic and natural. Yes. Um, one of the things 
that I, I would love to do that's our goal for when we do sheep's milk is to have an herb garden so that we oh. can use some of the herbs. My favorite is mint. Like yeah. That is, I just, mint chocolate, like that oh. kind of stuff is just my, like my jam. And, and that's what that, we, uh, oh, I'm so, yeah, that's what we did this summer is selling <laughs> um, a sheep milk ice cream made with our own mint. I infused the milk, the sheet milk with our, our spearmint and it was mm -hmm. amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think a lot of people don't realize the difference between like buying the extract and like actually using the fresh stuff. Oh yeah. Um, or even just different varieties. I think a lot of times, you know, the, the spearmint's all made with one type of, you know, variety of of plant because yeah. it's the best that grows or it, you know, just for that reason and then you like oh there's there's other types of oh yeah mint. um i think there was mountain mint and there's oh, no, chocolate no. mint also there's, there's all there's yeah. all kinds and it's like it's it does add a little bit of different flavor yeah and those are the things i'm excited to experiment with is to is to kind of find those those flavors that people are familiar with but that have just a Give little a bit of unique yeah. thing where they're like yeah. Is this? Oh, mint? You're like, yeah, it is mint. And they're like, yeah. really? I'm like, yeah. You know yeah. why it tastes different? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. My my sister actually made um, some bourbon 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 sorry bourbon uh, caramel sauce with meat and made with sheep milk, and it was just amazing. Just mixing different flavors with the sheep milk or giving a twist to um, a well known you know ingredient is really really exciting. And yeah, my um. One of the things I made for my for my dad for Christmas this year was I do this this whiskey um, ice cream that, mm. because we're from Tennessee, so Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, not Jack Daniels. Um, yeah. Oh no, Jack Daniels. Um, and so what there was Tennessee honey. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. That's something that like all my family, my family are they love their sweets. Yeah. So totally. they like the sweeter whiskey. And so I made them uh, with something with the uh, I made ice cream. It was cow's milk because that's the only thing I had access yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. but they like all loved it. And I and I love wine. So there's like all these things in my head. <laughs> ideas, like, yeah, yeah. What can I make? You know, how how many things can you make with ice cream that are just unique and kind of yes, like, yeah. You know something else one of the things I, I love is ice cream is very much a child's you know it seems like that's something that children like but I'm like I love the idea of infusing it with some adult flavors yeah 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 yeah. Um, you know so that you know adults feel like oh you know this this tastes familiar and it feels yeah, 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 yeah. um like I just love that and so that you know the whole gardening thing is so such a big thing if you're if you're doing your own soaps or your own food that if For you sure. have the opportunity to garden, it's it's really a great opportunity to experiment with flavors and, and stuff like that, especially with um, Do you do a lot of heirloom varieties? We do. That's really what I enjoy is, mm -hmm. you know, having a garden that doesn't look like everyone else else's. And so, yeah, we do have a lot of heirloom. Even in my annuals, um, I had a lot of heirloom zinnias this year that were just really gorgeous. So I just like to you know, try different things and uh, ha have my own homemade uh, little greenhouse shelving thing I made up <laughs> last year. And I just do, uh, you know, we have such a short growing season. So I start to um, way ahead, like even in February, I'm already starting um, lots of, um, uh, you know, flowers and vegetables and everything. And we, we also have a big kitchen garden and a row garden. So we're trying to grow our own food as much as possible. And, uh, and we started um, being beekeepers this year as well. So um, you know, a little bit of honey, not too much the first year. So we're excited about next year. This is also something I can incorporate in our soaps. So, you know, everything, you know, everything you're passionate about trying to combine those things together, I think it makes uh, your life so much richer and uh, just makes the whole thing so fun. And I love, you know, trying different things, not being stuck in a rut when I, um, you know, in a business, when I make products, just trying to, even if I make the same batch of soap, trying to do a little something different with the lavender. That's what I did. Oh, how about, you know, using a little bit oatmeal uh, in the winter. It's good for your skin and uh, why not having it with a little purple. So let's go with the clay. So just trying to, even if it's the same scent, try to do things differently every time. Yeah, uh, one of the things, because we're talking about the ingredients that you put in your soaps, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the clay. Um, mm -hmm. That fascinates me. I, I, as a hobby, work with polymer clay. 
So um, I do kind of stash journal covers mostly um, with clay, but it's not the same clay because it's like a powder. So can you explain a little bit about, because I guess in most people's heads, I would think that it's like clay is like the molding kind. Yeah, um, no, no, no. So can you explain a little bit about what clay is and what it does for your um, soaps? Yes. Um, so I get we at this point we get mostly French uh, clays, which I actually don't even know. Besides that, it comes from France. Don't even know <laughs> that much about it. But we use French green clay, and clay is extremely good to detoxify uh, your skin. Um, so and we use bentonite clay. We use French uh, pink clay as well. I have Brazilian clay. So it's all in powder forms. Um, I'm I think I have some right here. Actually, no, it's on the other side of the room. So yeah, so we have um, Carolyn. And so I'm always looking. There's also American clay that I want to use. Um, so I'm always looking for um, different ways to color our soaps. Mm -hmm. And clays is such an easy way, very convenient. You just put a few teaspoons of, um, of clays in your products and it, the color is just so vibrant. Uh, botanicals, I think calendula is a good one to bring that vibrant um you know orangey color so you can also color with botanicals um and you know activated charcoal that's another one that we use in our soap to get that beautiful black and um right now i'm experimenting with all kinds of new uh, you know new um new things like chlorophyll and i have wool powder that will that is supposed to give you that beautiful uh, beautiful blue. I'm uh, having blue Cambrian clay that I just got from Russia, actually. <laughs> uh, and I tried that in our soap that is launching this month. And it gave that beautiful green, light green color. Mm -hmm. um, I have dead sea mud that I also got this month to get her gray. So I'm, I'm very crazy about <laughs> finding, you know, different colors and just playing around uh, with uh, different things. So um, yeah, I'm game for everything. You never know how it's going to turn out with your recipe. Um, you know, we use a lot of olive oil. So, you know, this is um, an oil that sometimes uh, will change a little bit of the color of your clays and everything. So you never know really until, you know, you cut it and you look at it. Uh, so yeah, my blue Cambrian clay, which I thought was going to be a beautiful blue, turned out to be a beautiful green. <laughs> it's an eucalyptus soap, so that's okay. But um, yeah, I just, I just love figuring out, you know, natural ways to color all of her products. Are yeah. you, are you very science minded? Cause one of the things I know about soap, um, when you get down to like the nitty gritty is it's very chemically, like you have to just make sure that everything's balanced, that things don't affect other things in the wrong way. And, um, I think someone I talked to in one of the other discussions, um, was like, I'm not naturally science minded so oh. I think that's a lot of times very overwhelming for people thinking like if they want to get started like for me I have all the stuff but it's like the lie and the science yeah. part of it is like keeping me like, well mostly because of my kids too yeah. like I have little kids so like finding a place that's a safe environment that they're not going to run in and knock over like that's that's also kind of keeping me back from trying my first batch yeah um you know so if you're not science minded, how did you kind of get into it um, and kind of get over that hump of like, oh, I don't know if I can do this? Yes, yes. Um, same, you know, same fear, same everything. Uh, and even now my son is nine and when I make soap, he's out of the room, you know, he doesn't come in. Uh, and of course you need the gears, um, you know, your, your, the glasses, sleeves, you know, gloves, everything. Um, I think um, I'm not science minded at all. I'm a musician <laughs> by training, so I'm just an artist, um, but um, I love researching. So that's one thing that um, I could do all day. So I just do research, I read, I look at 10,000 videos and blog posts and books and everything. So I just do a lot and lot of research and that's seems to help me, um, you know, with some of my fears. And I'm like, okay. And I research for a long time before I even attempt anything. Um, and I just think about it a lot at night <laughs> before I go to bed. It's almost if I make 5,000 products in my head before I even, you know, make a real, <laughs> real batch of soap. So I did that a lot, just like repeating the process in my head over and over and over again. Um, and at some point you just got to go for it. You know, for me, like flying with essential oils and using, you know, sheet milk and, you know, just, 
you know, the love for homesteading was there. And I was like, okay, I just want to do this. Um, and yeah, and I think when you have a lot of knowledge, um, even if you don't have the experience, I think when you start acquiring a lot of knowledge, you start to be more confident about it. And, um, and you know, soap has been made for a long, long, long time by so many people. Um, yeah, and I just decided I can do this too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and when you just do it safely and you, you know, you know a little bit what you're doing. And for me, you know, the, the science behind it, you know, there's software that, that do the work for you, how much fly you need. And there's like soap cows. So you don't need to, um, you know, I would never rely on my own calculation whatsoever. I'm way, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't trust myself. So I just go and really, you know, enter all my numbers and, you know, tweak the recipe. And uh, on the bottom, they also tell you uh, is it how, um, how cleansing is your bar, how this and how bubbly and everything. So you can tweak your recipe. Uh, but as far as the lye versus, you know, the sheet milk um, and, you know, the oils and everything, that's a calculation that is made for you uh, by this software that uh, most soap makers use. So I felt confident to just, you know, my first recipe, I just felt confident that I was doing the right thing and I wouldn't burn anybody <laughs> at the end of those four weeks with my bars of soap. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I think I love about just farming, but also making these kind of products is that when you do the research and, you know, ahead of time, yeah, you know, that's great. You still got to just kind of push through the fear and just do it. And then what I also love is that the more you do it, the more confident you feel, but you're always learning. Yeah. Like, you know, you could be doing this for five, 10 years, but if you're experimenting with, with a different material, you know, different flavor or different smell or whatever, that it's still brand new. It's still something where like, if, that's, if you're someone who likes to be challenged, you know, it, this, this is soap and farming is definitely something that will, will get you, will challenge you. Oh yeah, you. <laughs> for sure. And you know, there's always the unknown. There's always something that will, even just with the animals. I mean, just with that, there's always, you know, some questions like, oh my God, what's going on? They're not moving or, you know, there's always something that keeps you on your toes. Um, and yeah, I think the, the going for it, this is really the last step that you just trust yourself enough to start something new. Um, and I think I learned that through my um, classical, uh, classical pianist career to just at some point, you know, you feel prepared enough to go perform. And um, because we never feel prepared enough, really, <laughs> when it comes down to this, we always feel, oh, it could be better. It could be this. It could be that. And at some point, you just got to jump. And this is something I learned over the years. And I taught a lot of students as well. And this is just that push that you just got to, you know, you just got to go, you just got to jump. And that's actually what I did with this business. I just decided to go for it. And even now I feel that a lot of my recipes when I started were not up to par. And, and even now I'm sure in, you know, five years from now, I'm going to consider the work I'm doing now, um, not as good as what I'm doing five years later. But if you wait for perfection, uh, you know, you'll never do anything. So at some point you just got to trust yourself feel good about what you have to offer and just go for it. And then have the grace when things for your own, for yourself, when things don't turn out. Yeah, well. yeah, for sure. <laughs> and also detached one thing from my, my goals for 2020. I was reading them the other day. Uh, my goals from a year ago was to detach from the wanted results. Um, that's something that I have been trying, you know, in 2020, actually it, it, the pandemic. <laughs> with everything you know it was pretty easy to just detach because nothing went you know like we planned so um but this is also important when it's out there in the world you just have the grace and the trust that it's just going to work out and just go where it's supposed to be going be going and that's it so yeah. like well baby you know you do the best you can and that's it <laughs> yeah yeah i was actually thinking it sounds a lot like parenthood you know you you yeah. can research all you want but some you know you never feel ready and then once you get into it, you're still learning. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, it's just one of the, you know, and, you know, at least for a baby, there's a time limit. Yeah. <laughs> you can't keep putting it off, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It, you know, the baby's coming. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah but yeah, you, I think with the business, you have to see it that way as well. You know, you set a goal and by that time, you know, like ready, not ready, just, just go for it. And, um, you know, of course, there's a lot of testing that needs to happen before you launch anything for sure. 
um, and but you know at some point when you yeah when you've been testing you know for a few months I think at some point it's time to launch it and see if that works or not you know it's, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so one of the questions I wanted to ask because you know you you did kind of run a business um, through COVID which you know a lot of businesses didn't do very well mm -hmm. um, and this is something I've asked um, other people what would you looking back on your your business on your farm what would you say are your biggest successes and maybe biggest challenges mm -hmm. um, that you've faced kind of from the beginning to now? Yeah, um, I think just when I'm thinking about our success is just surviving this pandemic. I mean, that's, I think the biggest success, <laughs> we're still standing and I'm still making soap curing and, and just has, still having fun doing it. So, uh, but another success that happened last year was opening our, our little farm store. I've been dreaming of that for so, so long. Um, and we didn't know if it was um, the right thing to do, you know, to open, um, you know, a store during a pandemic, you know, and of course we live in Vermont, which uh, the pandemic has not hit us the same as most of the United States. And, um, and you know, we have very tiny little farm stores. So it's only two people at a time and only during the weekend. So we're doing it and with math and everything. So we're doing it very safely, but I still didn't know if it was the right thing to do for us at that point. And uh, we decided to go for it just to mainly to build community. I mean, it was so lonely. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been teaching piano and having a, a, a piano school at our house for a decade. So I was kind of missing, you know, having people coming in and I just love sharing what we have and, you know, talking to people, hearing their stories. A lot of people that came to our doors needed to talk. Um, so yeah, so that was something that I didn't expect that was gonna be the highlight of my year to just have people come through our doors and, and just hearing them, like hearing, listening to them, what they had to say. A lot of um, older people who were very lonely and they just came and uh, they just enjoy, you know, the scent and, you know, like the, the, my son opens the door for everyone and he shows the chickens and the ducks, like just a little joy and a little light during this hard time. Um, so that, I think that was our biggest success to kind of build community during this pandemic. Um, so, yeah, I would say that. And of course, the challenge was the jump. <laughs> really, what we were talking about is like, are we doing this? And it was a huge amount of work. Uh, to start with and just to, yeah, to just put everything in, into place to be able to open this, this store. And, um, and we were initially supposed to do our first farm, farmer's market and that fell through. Mm. So this is also why we pushed, you know, opening our store a little, you know, higher on the list and we decided to go for it. So yeah, so that was our first, you know, little bit of a challenge, like, are we doing this? And when the decision was made, it just felt right. And, um, yeah, and I think the challenges in, in during the pandemic for us are the same. It's just running a small business um, with my husband works full time still in another job. So it's mainly me. So it's everything you do by yourself, you know, marketing and social media, creating products, labeling, packaging. This, I mean, it's endless. So um, being able to juggle everything without too many balls <laughs> that drop on the floor. That has been a challenge, you know, since we started the business, just being able to do, to do it all. Um, and also financially, this is also, um, you know, something that um, the money doesn't come, you know, very rapidly when you start a business. So this is also how to sustain this. And with the pandemic, the sales went down. Um, so that was a little bit harder uh, for us. So yeah, so I think that's, and the sheet mail powder is still not coming <laughs> fast enough. So yeah, I think a lot of the challenges are the same. Uh, and the pandemic just kind of highlighted a lot of them, but I'm focusing on the successes and we're still in business and we have that little farm store that people are coming to. And in the little town, it's it's hard, you know, to, um, to have something that is uh, viable in a little town of 800 and uh, people are coming. So I'm I'm just happy. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that you made the point that that because I've heard it for, from a few people that that like having a farm that people can go to mm -hmm. um, in this time, especially that, it you know, it's outside. It's you know, it's relatively safe um, is is sort of other people's 
safe place, I guess, yeah, you know, yeah. being outside um, is, is safer and stuff like that. And, and it's, it's just, they, I found that a lot of people are saying that their farms are kind of some people's safe haven, you know, yeah, if, they're, yeah. if they're living in like a, a, an apartment, you know, they can spend some time outside on someone's farm and it's like it rejuvenates them because it gets them outside, it, you know, and, and I think that's something I, I, that I, that this, this year is, um, you know, in a way it's, it's really, it's hard, but in another way, it's brought some blessings. I think it's gotten people to get outside more, you know, to enjoy the fresh air and, and stuff like that. And to appreciate that. Um, yeah, and to appreciate each other even more, because when you don't get to see that many people, when mm -hmm. you see them, you kind of want the connection to be a little bit more meaningful than just, okay, hi, how are you? Bye-bye. Um, so mm -hmm. you, you engage into conversations that are a lot more meaningful. I heard stories from people, and I'm sure if it was not for the pandemic, it, I would never have heard, you know? So it's, um, yeah, I think it's just, you know, there's so much hardships and heartaches, but at the same time, it kind of transforms a lot of how people are relating to each other. And, um, and also when you see those ducks and chickens and the children running and, um, and I see, you know, what we created and how people are enjoying it, um, you realize like, oh, okay, maybe that makes a little bit of a difference, you know, small difference, but it still does something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's my goal with this business, same thing with my um, music career. Um, it was to put service at the forefront. So it was important for me to find a way to do this with our business. So I do it with the gemstone soaps. And also I feel that we're starting to create, like you said, like some kind of safe haven or just a place where people can come and just, you know, eat, eat sheet milk ice cream and just, you know, just smile for a minute, you know, and just maybe have some other people to talk to. And animals, you know, ducks and sheep. I mean, it's it's just fun for everyone to be able to feed the animals and, you know, just see them, you know, doing their silly things. Um, so we're hoping to get geese uh, in the spring um, also to just have them roam around when people come. So it's just, you know, just bringing a smile on people's faces. It's just, yeah. <laughs> important yeah animals yeah. animals are hilarious yeah <laughs> when you're they're either very calming or they're just really funny yeah yeah yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> so one of the things i wanted to ask you I, one of the things so the next thing i want to ask you um is what is your favorite part of this whole process whether it's just farming itself homesteading um your business what are kind of the things that that gives you life um during the day yes um, I think for me, it's everything um, that is creative. So um, I think, yeah, making soap, definitely my, my favorite thing. Um, second, with creating any new products. I just love to think about, you know, a sheep theme product or sheep milk and where can I put that sheep milk into? <laughs> that is uh, something that not that many people do. Uh, so the uniqueness of things, you know, like just I create something that is not sold everywhere else. Um, I love photography. That's something that um, I've been enjoying tremendously. But I think, again, the thing that uh, I enjoy the most is building community. It's just talking to people, hearing them, um, you know, they tell me what they think about or so they come back and they want more of this, more of that. It, it's just it, it just feels now that, um, yeah, that I'm building something that people are coming back <laughs> to uh, into, and it just feels great. So the community part of it, on uh, a creative, you know, everything that is creative, the creative process of um, of the product building and everything, and uh, the community aspect of it, I think, are my most favorite part of the business. Yeah. How do you come up with your your new product ideas? Uh, is it a collab with your husband and your sister kind of, or is it kind of you're the head and you kind of go, I think this is a real idea, a good idea. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think for food, um, my sister is the one that makes her, or, you know, has her own ideas. She's the best cook in the world. And she's, yeah, <laughs> she's so good. So I, I, that I don't come up that much with ideas about food. I mean, we have a little bit of, uh, an idea to try sheet milk butter. Uh, we had a customer from Russia that came that said that it's just, she's looking for sheet milk butter and it's amazing and everything. So we're gonna try that. But uh, most of the food is my sister. My uh, husband is a, a, an amazing woodworker. So he comes up with his own idea. So he's doing um, sheep coasters and, um, and uh, cutting boards. And the rest is 
just me. So I just, yeah, I think it, you know, the wheels are turning 24 seven. I'm just always excited about what else can I, co you know, come up with. And uh, late at night, I just come up with those crazy ideas that I uh, try in the morning. So uh, yeah, I, 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 lots of research. I come across something um, that people are doing with tons of synthetic colors and fragrances. How can I translate that to a more natural um, way of doing things? And sometimes it just comes to me like, oh, how about this? And uh, just try it. And <laughs> so I don't know, really, it just comes up different ways. <laughs> yeah, I love that you guys have like, you, you have the one business, but you also have your sister doing you know, one side of it, your husband doing the other, and then you doing the, the third. And it's just kind of, it's a really fun, like collaboration between oh, all of you guys. Sure. You guys each kind of get to do your own, your own hobby, the one thing that you love, but it's also themed around the same thing. Yeah. Um, and I just think that's, that's really, it's really unique. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, my sister is, um, is also a violinist. She's, um, studying to be a mental health counselor, but we were applying together and teaching together for years. Um, and so I always enjoy a family business. Even when I had a, a school, my husband was the assistant uh, director. So we associate directors. So we were always working um, together. So this is something that I enjoy tremendously. It just feels, um, yeah, it feels great to just, you know, do it, like you said, do our own thing. So we're not stepping on each other's toes. Uh, but at the same time, we're together. So, you know, it just feels good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so let's go into this coming year. You talked a little bit about kind of some of the, the new things you're adding to your soaps. Um, that's kind of stuff that you want to experiment with this year. Is there anything else for your shop? Um, and you can speak to, you know, your sister or your husband or even you um that you're kind of excited about trying or experiment uh, experimenting with um as well as the other things you've already mentioned yes so my husband is uh, really excited about um expanding our flock that's his thing he wants a million sheep <laughs> so and um and his dream is to make cheese um so he's thinking about taking classes this summer um and so we'll see he's really excited about uh, about that part of the business and continue his woodworking as well my sister has all kinds of ideas from uh, truffles and yeah, all kinds of things that she wants to make with sheep milk and i want to try a little bit of uh, butter like i mentioned and also um keep going with the sheep milk ice cream um, i think it brings people uh, through the door for sure when you have a uh, um, she, you know, an ice cream cone, you know, down at the road, it makes people, um, you know, bring them up the driveway. So I want to do this. And I actually enjoy very much making the ice cream. And um, on the uh, body care and, you know, front of things, um, I want to, uh, we're going to launch lip balms, sheet milk lip balms and sheet milk lotion bars. Um, we also have all kinds of different soaps coming up. And I would like also to introduce um, shampoo bars this year um, and maybe uh, things for pets at the request of my husband, uh, maybe like some shampoo um, bars for pets as well. And, um, and more and more, I am getting really into yarn. Uh, so I started felting our soaps uh, this year uh, with all kinds of needle felt designs. And I really enjoy that. And, um, and we're gonna get our own yarn. Somebody is spinning it as we speak. And so I would like to maybe do the wool dryer balls. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so many ideas. I, I'm probably not gonna be able to do all of it, but um, we're starting with uh, lotion bars and lip balms in January. So oh. that's for sure. <laughs> um, so you, you, your husband mentioned you guys wanted to expand, expand the flock. I don't think we ever talked about how many acres you guys have. So yeah. um, can you kind of share that? Cause you, you're like, my husband will have a million sheep, but I'm like, well, technically. Yeah, that will work. <laughs> no, have say, that's not gonna work. <laughs> uh, we have 11 acres, okay. but um, yeah, so that's quite a bit, uh, mm -hmm. but a lot of it is um, like woodsy. So, you know, we would need to just chop everything. So I would say we have about like two acres or two to three acres that are available for, you know, gardening and, you know, keeping sheep and our other, livestock so um yeah we have a big hill and you go down and there's a river and everything it's really pretty but um you know to um you know keep our sheep that would work so yeah there's a limit to how many we can 
we can have for sure. <laughs> we have a uh, about five, a little over five and a half. Uh -huh. about three of it that's pasture so that's why i was curious because yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we probably have like you know eight out of 11 that are mm -hmm. pasture at the moment so um yeah we could do we could expand um actually there's a little bit of the clearing on some of our land in the back but that would take a lot of work a lot of energy to do that well i know you can also um do lots and, and rent other spaces. yeah so he has options but it, yeah <laughs> Yeah, we'll start, you know, like, uh, and my husband is still working full time, long, long, long hours. So that's also uh, something to think about, you know, it takes, uh, I mean, sheep are pretty good, They're, you know, um, you know, we, we can have, you know, a little bit more and, and still be able to uh, take care of them properly. But, you know, there's also a limit there with the amount of time. And also there's a business, you know, that we have to run. So it's juggling a lot of balls, you know, like the farmer, the farming, you know, side of thing and the business side of thing and, you know, making all of those products, selling them. There's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. When, like you said, your husband's really busy with work and then yeah. you said he's also the head kind of farmer. Yeah. And yeah. He does his woodworking and then he wants to do the cheese. And then like, you know, a lot of people don't realize how, how much that is. You know, because yeah. you know it doesn't sound like a ton unless you're actually in it, and then you're like, no, it's actually oh, a lot, a lot. It's a lot, <laughs> mm -hmm. and even our nine-year-old is helping. You know, he's doing his part, and um, you know, he was the one um, that um, was hatching chicks like oh. crazy during the pandemic. You know, he doesn't have any brothers or sisters, so we let him hatch as many chicks as he wanted. So uh, we have a huge flock now, like thirty. I mean, for us, thirty-something uh, chickens now. And um, so, yeah, so, but he's helping with chores, you know, he's doing a little bit of work every day. And um, yeah, it's at some point, everybody has to um, be involved, you know, if we want to have this lifestyle and he helps us with gardening and um, he learns a lot and um, yeah, and he still has lots of fun, but you know, a little bit of work also. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the, I, the family farm aspect of, you know, far, well, I mean, farming itself is usually communal you know you the whole family it is, it is. um yeah. you know so it's always fun to hear about stories about the kids getting involved you know we have two ourselves we got an infant and a two-year-old and my two-year-old just loves to help yeah um, yeah yeah. like the garden you go in with this yeah it can, you know he, he was involved since he was born basically and the baby bjorn and he used to just you know be involved in everything and um yeah, and he's an only child. So for him, the animals are just, you know, his friends and this, you know, he's just so attached to all of them. He's just one of them, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you have any, because we're kind of going to be wrapping up. Um, so I only have a few more questions. Do you have any words of advice for someone who's either starting a home? I mean, you've got a lot going on. So a homestead, a business, starting soap, or even just cosmetics, do you guys? You can have an advice for each one, or you can have an overall, you know, advice. But um, can you share some of the wisdom you've learned, um, kind of going through all of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's just start with what you love. Like really, like it seems like, you know, small advice, but it comes down to this because this is a uh, lots of work, <laughs> lots of work, and it takes a lot of time. Um, you know, to develop and everything. And if you're just not truly passionate about it, um, just don't even start, you know, like a, that's what I do. Even when I launch a product, I know this product will probably be on the shelf and I'm going to have to make a thousand batches of each one of them. So I got to be so passionate about everything. And it's also a lifestyle that, you know, seems very appealing to so many people, especially right now with the pandemic, you know, the, this homesteading lifestyle. Um, and it is amazing. It's, I wouldn't change it for, for anything, but it is also a lot of work. So, you know, you got to make sure that you're just committed, you know, the animals at minus, you know, 20 degrees, you know, they need to have water and food and, you know, you just got to love this lifestyle. Same thing with gardening. I mean, woof, this is, you know, you can garden hours and hours and hours a day and growing your own food and storing it and preserving it. I mean, it's just, um, it's a lifestyle, really. It's not something that um, you do whenever you want, you know, it's just you commit it every day to do it a little bit, you know, and uh, with the business, um, I would say that if you're not um, a business person, surround yourself with the right people, um, 
right now. I'm doing the whole thing, but you know, maybe follow my own advice to just start surrounding myself with um, people who are better at certain things than, than myself. So being a team, I think it's, you know, surrounding yourself with, you know, community and with people um, that can, you know, support the business is, is, is key. Not going on the whole thing alone and uh, not being afraid to asking questions a lot, tons of research and also going to uh, meet with people who can um, help you and teach you is also very important. But yeah, ultimately, if you love it, you'll just, yeah, it will work out. <laughs> yeah. yeah I love I love the the community aspect that's one of yeah. the reasons I, I did this was to gain knowledge but also to add a little bit of that community that you know a lot of farm classes and stuff weren't available this year yes yeah. this is the year we got our sheep so there was a lot we needed to learn and I just, yeah, yeah yeah I don't know where to learn this all I mean you can read a book but yeah it's not the same than getting it from is, somebody else yeah yeah it's actually like talking about what is it what does real life look like yeah yeah, for yeah. Um, uh, life experiences is yeah and everyone's different so one person wrote a book and you're going to get that one person's kind of perspective and things yes, like that yes. but you know, when you, and even then it's going to be a written edited perspective, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, and so I love just talking to, uh, you know, real people and just kind of how they got started. Um, so let's wrap up here. If you could share how people can follow you, you talked about all your new products. So definitely share with them where they can find the products, where they can follow you on your journey. Um, Cause it sounds like there's a lot going, cause it's going to happen in 2021 for you. Yes, yes. Uh, so we have a website, um, sheepshopvt.com. We are also on social media, uh, on Instagram, sheepshopvt, same thing on Facebook. So that's mainly the platforms we are active um, on right now. We also have a YouTube channel. Uh, hopefully something will happen this year, but right now the website, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. And it's all the, the sheep shop? Oh, uh, sheep shop VT, yes. Great. Great. Well, thank you so much for giving me your time and sharing all this wonderful information. It's, it's so much fun for me to talk with people, farmers, people who are doing products, um, business owners, you know, especially if you're running your own business, like I just, and you're like the only person there because there's so much involved. You are basically wearing every single hat. Yeah, and it is a lot of work, and uh, so I just love talking to people. And thank you again so much for for sharing your time. And thank you so much for organizing this amazing conference. I cannot wait to learn some more <laughs> through everybody's experiences and knowledge. Thank you so much. Thanks again.